All right, guys, welcome to a video. Not just any video, it's my video, so you know it's special. Just from me to you, with love. And this video is going to be the first video of a series. I do a lot of series on this channel. But this one is going to be about... Uh, let, me, let me just phrase it to you this way. My ship out day for boot camp, which is the day that you reach boot camp and you you first become your journey, uh, you begin your journey as a recruit, is your ship out day. Now this this series is going to be two days before that. So for me, my ship out day was June fifteenth. So this is going to take place June thirteenth, June fourteenth, and June fifteenth. Three days. Now it's probably going to take about four videos for me to do that. The uh, you know obviously the first day of boot camp is going to take up two videos. And this first video is going to take place right now, the night of June 12th, all right? The very, the very night, because I just want to give you guys a, a quick story from that night before I reach the, the second to last day before ship out day. So, night of June 12th, I call up my buddies, my best buds, all throughout middle school, high school. Right when I moved to that, that area of Michigan, they were my best buds, Kevin and Perry. Now, Perry and I are pretty straightforward guys, and Kevin, he's an emotional guy, but he's hes the most brilliant guy. He's got this, I'll make about four videos for me to do that. The, uh, you know, obviously the first day of boot camp is going to take up two videos. And this first video is going to take place right now, the night of June 12th, all right? The very, the very night, because I just want to give you guys a, a quick story from that night before I reach the, the second to last day before ship out day. So... Night of June 12th, I call up my buddies, my best buds, all throughout middle school, high school, right when I moved to that, that area of Michigan, they were my best buds, Kevin and Perry. Now, Perry and I are pretty straightforward guys, and Kevin, he's an emotional guy, but he's, he's the most brilliant guy, he's got this uh, mind of a freaking genius, he's freaking Einstein, I, I would say. He, the fun fact about him, he made, uh, maybe I'll give you guys a picture if I can find it, of... Actually, yeah, let, let's do that because I need to find out how to uh, to edit these videos on this. But I'll, I'll show you guys a video of the rifle. Um, oh my god, what do I call that? The freaking scope mount for my airsoft rifle. He made that, the scope mount, with a 3D printer that he 3D printed. He made a 3D printer with a 3D printer just so that he could make a scope mount and like just whatever he wanted. So... I don't know. The guy's brilliant. All right, I watched him make that scope mount for me and design it, specialized. But <laughs> anyway, this is sidetrack like crazy. June twelfth night, I call him up and I'm like, hey, let's get some McDonald's. Let's catch up. Two days before I leave. All right, this is gonna be the last day that I see you guys. So we we all pack into, uh, I believe it was Kevin's car. It was his white freaking Mustang or whatever it's called. And it's his prized possession. And he's like, all right. Just for this, just for this moment, I'll let you guys eat McDonald's in my car. So we drive down two miles, go to McDonald's. We pick up some fries from the from the drive-thru. I think I picked up uh, McFlurry or something. Like We were just kind of picking out. And we were talking and reminiscing about the old times. And really, this is, uh, this is the last day of our childhood. This is sort of marking it. So a couple days prior to this, we had our graduation letter handed to us. Uh, we walked down the stage and... We got our diploma. That's what it's called. And uh, now this is like the last day that we say goodbye. We used to spend every day together. And this is the last day that we get to see each other. And we uh, become men, right? Now, uh, there's a couple things you can bring to boot camp. I, I want to say five. All right? This is stamps, a pen, a razor. But you don't even bring that to boot camp. You have to throw it out at the airport. A Bible and the clothes off your back. Now... The Bible is a can be a huge asset if you let it. Let me explain this real quick. If any of you are leaving for boot camp um, in the near future, whatever it is, remember this piece of advice. If your sergeant doesn't tell you that you're recruiting sergeant, remember this. So you can you can put like I did, and I didn't get caught. All right, I was whatever. I'm not a bad child, but I did this because I am. I know that I'll be homesick. All right, what I did is that I got little tiny pictures, one by one pictures, of my family, and I taped them inside one page in the Bible. Now, you know, what if, what if they just, you know, what if they take your Bible, all right, and you have all your pictures of your girlfriend, which I was super attached to at the time, and my family, 
And what if they, what if they, what if they pick up your Bible and they find those pictures? They're gonna rip you a new one. So, what do you do? Is you get a stamp, and you stamp together two pages in the Bible. So you sandwich, you basically sandwich those pictures that you taped. So that way nobody can flip through it on accident. And when you're ready to go and see them, you just kind of undo that one stamp, look at them, and stamp it back together, and you're good to go. So. Yeah, quick tip from Corey, all right? I I came up with that all by myself, too, so. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, okay, so my, my sergeant didn't tell me that. What he did tell me, um, which you, all, you should all do, is in the last page of your Bible, you want to write down, and you're allowed to do this, write down all of the addresses of all the people you want to write letters to. And also write down your mother's uh, phone number so that you can memorize it so when that first day of boot camp comes, you can call her, which uh, I'll, I'll get to that on the third video, all right? But to continue on, we were writing down my addresses uh, in the car. So we, we got done eating french fries, and Perry, I was like, hey, let, you know, let's put on some music, some good old Coldplay, which we were all obsessed with, me and Perry especially. And we were, uh, we were writing down our, you know, their address in my... In my uh, my Bible. Now Perry got through it uh, pretty good. Um, we were kind of, we were kind of starting to, it was starting to hit us a little bit, just like writing down the address so I can write them letters. Like holy shit. Um, but then when it got to Kevin, Kevin breaks down. Okay, like granted there was a really sad song that came on. It was Coldplay, um, and he broke down. All right, the guy's pretty emotional. Um, nothing against him, you know. It's an emotional time, but. Um, it really hit us right then that we were going to be uh, separated, you know, because we're best butts. Sounds really gay, but come on. Now, uh, <laughs> so that happens. He breaks down, and uh, we get him, we, you know, we get our act together. We start breaking down with them, but we, we, you know, we got our act together, and we finished writing down the addresses, and uh, I remember they drove me home, and uh, we were just hanging out in my driveway, and Perry and Kevin were just trying to, and me, all right, granted me, we're just trying to stall the entire time um, in the driveway, just talking to each other. I want to say for an hour, just talking. And I was literally in the driveway. I, you know, they had dropped me off. I had gotten out of the car, and they were just talking to me through the, through the window, and for like an hour. You know, we didn't want to leave each other, but we ended up leaving, obviously. And uh, yeah, so I got home, and um, you know, my mom's like, "Hey, you know, what was taking so long?" I'm like, "Hey, you know, saying goodbye to my buds." Now, <laughs> seven minutes of the video. Uh, I, I think I gave you a lot of information, though. Um, now it's going to be the start of the second to last. So the last day that I see my family is today, and I'm going to explain all, all about that. You wake up uh, early in the morning. I met with my girlfriend uh, who lived 15 minutes away, and I uh, picked her up, took her out to Coney Island, which is a diner if you guys don't know, and I ate some great big old breakfast with her and it was brilliant now after that uh, what do we do we went to my house we were hanging out just kind of uh, cuddling I'll be honest we're cuddling having a good old time Not, <laughs> okay well that sounds bad I'm just trying to stall while my brain catches up with me I'm so tired it's 1 1 a.m. but um, <laughs> the, yeah so we we're, were cuddling and we were watching movies and we were, we were just uh, trying to stay together for as long as we can, just be as close together as possible before I left. Now, uh, it, 2 p.m. came, and it was time to go and get dressed with my blue polo shirt and my jeans and my tennis shoes and grab my Bible, and I was double-checking, making sure I had my glasses and all these different things so that I can leave. Now, I'll show you guys the picture of it, too. I'll show you the picture of uh, me, the last picture I took inside my house before I left boot camp. This was uh, hours before I said goodbye to my family. Um, and I'm pretty sure I looked freaking distraught in that picture too, if I remember. I look so sad. Um, I'll show you some other pictures as well. Now, uh, yeah, after that, I went to... Oh, God, what was it? They, uh, they dropped me off at the recruiting office so that I could... Uh, we would all go into my, my uh, sergeants and uh, corporals' cars... All ten of us that were shipping out that day, and we were all to be driven to the hotel that we we're gonna stay the night before shipping out to, before getting uh, bust out, I believe, to the airport. 
Now, uh, they, they, we all packed into, I packed into Sergeant Tash's truck with uh, a couple of my other buddies, like two or three more. And I remember I was in the middle in the back of his truck for some reason. I remember that. And, uh, uh, our, our family was following because we don't have phones or whatever. They were just like, Hey, just follow us. And, uh, that way you can, you can, uh, spend the last few hours, uh, with them after they arrive at the hotel. So like, They'll drop us off at the hotel, and then we'll uh, we'll be with our families for a couple hours okay. after that because, you know, they followed us. So we were in the car, and in the car we're just kind of chit-chatting, trying to find out as much as we can about boot camp because, you know, you're going to be so nervous and stuff. But we're confident. We're, we're confidently nervous. Now, uh, in the in the car ride, uh, I remember Sergeant Tesh is like, oh, you guys want to know what, uh, what battalion you're in? And we're like, yeah? <laughs> uh, like, uh, we didn't really know what that meant, but yeah. Um, and he's like, 3rd Battalion India Company. I was like, what? What does that mean? And he's like, <laughs> well, 1st Battalion makes men, 2nd Battalion makes Marines, 3rd Battalion makes machines. And then you could you could feel the silence. And it was just like, oh, God. Like, <laughs> So you're telling us we're, we're, uh, we're in the toughest battalion. Now, anybody, anybody who's been through boot camp, uh, whatever battalion you're in, will always say they have the worst, but it's pretty well-known fact, or pretty well-known, uh, like, what do you say, like, rumor that 3rd Battalion is the worst. That's where all the, the all the crazy stories you hear from boot camp, the, the washing machine was literally the, the deck next to me uh, in boot camp, the washing machine dis, uh, thing, like, uh, all the hazing crazy moments happen in third battalion right i'll just say it outright now uh yeah we find that find that out and we we're kind of we we're kind of distraught over that but then we were just laughing and we we're like oh my gosh this is gonna be crazy man but we, you know we're just like god dang man like this is gonna be crazy <laughs> so uh yeah we ended up uh oh man after that we got to the hotel and uh, they drop us off, and then after they drop us off, we get signed into it. All ten of us, we have five rooms right next to each other, uh, two men to each room. And we drop off our Bible and stuff on our beds real quick, and then we just run out to the run out to the parking lot all so right, we can spend right, those last precious are. minutes with our family before saying goodbye forever <laughs> for three months. But it, you know, it's gonna feel like forever. We, you know, we're eighteen-year-old guys. Right. Now we, uh, yeah, I, I ran to my uh, ran to my. Uh, van uh with where my girlfriend and uh, my little sister and my two so, so parents sure, were huh? my stepdad and my mom and yeah my older sister wasn't there i'm, I'm thinking out loud guys and we're we're kind of new to the area so we're like hey where should we go um and i was like let's find like a good restaurant so we went to tgi fridays I had an amazing dinner with them. It was brilliant, and uh, I remember my for some reason I remember remember my mom saying, "Hey, we should get some dessert for you guys, um, for me, uh, <laughs> because you know I'm the I'm the birthday boy, right? Like uh, you know I'm the special guy for this occasion." And I remember saying, "No, you don't have to give me dessert." And the, you know they all kind of looked at me um, without trying to tell me like, "Hey, like." You're gonna be without dessert for like a long time, man. Like you should probably eat some. But I, you know, I was such, you know, I was still that little polite guy. I was just like, no, you don't have to give me dessert. But we ended up getting dessert, and it was delicious. After that, uh, we went on Google Maps. We were like, hey, what should we do now? And I remember we found a, uh, how was it called? Freaking theater. I forget what the. I think it was MJR or something. No, no, stop. I don't know. Why I remember that. But me and my girlfriend and my family, we decided to go to MJR and we watched Jurassic World because it came out just a couple days prior. Now, I had already watched Jurassic World like two times with my girlfriend and I think I watched it two times with her just because it was, you know, we were just in the area and we were like, hey, let's just watch Jurassic World. It's such a good movie. So I watched that and we, uh, when we got to the theater... It, this was going to be the last thing we do until we... Because we had exactly enough time to... to Watch the movie and drive back. That was the exact amount of time, and we all knew that you know we should probably do something like this to not only ease the the thought of leaving for boot camp and leaving each other, to just get lost in a, in a different world, a Jurassic world, <laughs> and and also so that uh, we wouldn't be able to delay ourselves when when it was time to let go. So right when we hit the theater, we watched the movie, we got lost into it, and then. You know, I, I I remember all the scenes, so when, when the freaking T-Rex starts fighting each other, I was like, oh, God, I'm going to have to say goodbye in 30 minutes to them and my girlfriend, who I was 
deeply in love with at the time, you know, being a 18-year-old guy. The movie ends. We uh, pack into the van and we start driving home, or, uh, you know, driving to the hotel. And I, uh, it was a pretty emotional time, guys. Uh, I won't lie, this is like one of the hardest times ever. Uh, even thinking back at it, it's, you know, it's pretty tough. <laughs> but I mean, I went through it, so I, you know, I guess I should be thinking of it in that sort of light. Um, <laughs> let, let me just say, right, r before I say this stuff, guys, this is going to be emotional. Um, but if you guys are leaving for boot camp, before I say any of this, know that you, you need a, like, this is, this is what life is for. It's for making these moments and stressing yourself beyond belief and getting these cool stories and these, these crazy stories so that later in life, when you're looking back at what you did and looking back at just, you're, you're explaining to people these things, just like I am to you, that you can go and you can s tell them these stories and how you got through it and you were successful. So that's what this is for, guys. Now, I've reached the hotel and uh, it was time. We, uh, we walked together all the way to the lobby, talking, laughing nervously. And I made sure I had my Bible. I, uh, I remember uh, we, uh, we opened the doors to the hotel. And in the lobby, at the far end of the lobby, almost out of sight, was uh, my buddies. And, you know, they, they had already said goodbye to their, uh, their parents and their loved ones. And uh, they were dealing with it pretty well. But I, uh, we got to the lobby, and, you know, there's the hotel receptionist, and there's just this giant lobby, and it was just emptiness, and, like, we could only walk so far until, it, you know, I just realized it was being useless. So we didn't walk very far off the, off the welcome mats, and uh, I turned around, and I saw my, my girlfriend there, and I gave her a hug, just went up to her, and I gave her a hug. Gave her a kiss in front of my parents, which is weird. I don't know. When you're when you're that age, like you never <laughs> like show affection to your girlfriend in front of your parents. It's kind of a no-no. But I remember I did that. I was shameless without them. Um, uh, I remember my my little sister. I gave her a hug, and she was uh, right after right after I gave my little sister a hug. You know, I had already said goodbye to my girlfriend, man. Like that's tough. Um, skipping over a lot of emotions, guys. My my sister turns around. She uh, she goes to my uh, my girlfriend. She you know they're they're uh, you know my my girlfriend. I'm pretty sure was comforting my sister. Uh, you know all, all I remember is I on on next was my mom and you know I hug her and she's the one who rose who raised me and she's the one who put me like got me into this place like because I, I was so motivated to join the Marine Corps and I, you know this is what my life was all amounting to was me leaving for this. This is what I built my life on top of was the fact that I was going to join the Marine Corps. And I, I hugged her and, um, you know, she was, uh, she was crying and smiling, not crying like crazy, but you know, you, you could just tell there's water in her eyes. And then I got to my stepdad who, uh, he, you know, he had only known me for like five years, but he was, you know, he's my dad, man. Like we, uh, we looked at each other and, um, He's like, Corey, and <laughs> I, uh, you know, I hugged him, gave him a big, fat, big, fat hug, man, and, uh, after I, after I stopped that, he's, uh, in the middle of that hug, he starts sobbing, and, uh, you know, I, you know, we get done with the hug, and I'm looking, looking at him, he, you know, he's shaking his head, he's like, make us proud, <laughs> oh, God, man, that's gonna make me cry later, <laughs> I'm like, oh, make me proud, man, like, yeah, I'm gonna make you proud, step there, like, I love you, man, and, um, well, you know, Dave is what we call him. And um, I remember he called him Dad. Uh, and yeah, that you know, that's that's what it was. So we get done uh, saying goodbye. And um, I remember, uh, whew, like, man, how do you explain that sort of thing, you know? We, uh, we get done hugging. And they start walking out. I remember my girlfriend, she wasn't... I, I could tell she wasn't crying, but she she never really cried. She always had a build up to it, and she was in that build up. And uh, I remember getting out of there, and uh, she my girlfriend uh, she started walking to the van first, and um, 
at first I was like, what? Like, you know, I wanted to see her one last time, but when, when I started walking towards my buddies, um, after saying goodbye, I realized, like, she didn't want to see, um, she didn't want to show me her crying, probably, and she probably didn't want me to, she didn't want to prolong this goodbye any further, like, you know, it's an emotional time for us all. So, uh, I got to my friends, and, uh, I was sobbing like a bitch. I was, you know, when I turned back to them, uh, I didn't want to show my, my family too much. I wanted to show them that I was tough and I was going to make it through. But when I, when I turned to my, uh, when, when I turned to go down that long lobby, I started sobbing like a bitch, man. Like, it was crazy. And, um, I got, I got myself together, uh, sort of, after I, after I saw my friends and they were like, oh, Corey. <laughs> so, you know. Or Weatherhold, because we were on a last name basis, and uh, I get to the I get to the hallway next to the next to the bedrooms, and I, I remember I uh, I was just I was just uh, crying, and I um, I was getting my composure. All right, got my composure, turned back to the lobby, and we're like, all right, what's happening now, guys? What's up? And they're like, hey, we're gonna order some pizza from the front desk. So we ordered some pizza, brought it to my room, um, and we all we were all in my room and uh, getting ready for this whole. Endeavor. Yes. So we were eating pizza, getting hyped, talking about how crazy this is gonna be, and how much we miss our family, and how we're gonna how we're gonna help each other through this because that's what it's all about, guys. This brotherhood starts right there. It's two days before you leave. The day you leave your family, and you say hello, and the, and you and you really grasp onto this brotherhood. That's the day. Like that is that is the day, guys. That the day you say goodbye to your family and you say hello to your new family. Yeah, that is that is the day. Um, there's no other words for it. Like that's that's when you start realizing what the brotherhood of the Marine Corps is all about. Now, um, yeah, I mean that's sort of uh, after that we went to bed pretty early, seven eight p.m. Um, because you know the next day was gonna be the next day. <laughs> And uh, anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. I gotta, I gotta edit this video. It is 1:15 a.m. And I hope you enjoyed this. I don't know if I already said that. I am so tired. Good night. I'll see you in the next video.